This is the classic Wiley Coyote problem. The Coyote is chasing the Roadrunner. The Roadrunner is too smart for the Coyote, and it's all going to end the same way. The Coyote is going to fall straight off a cliff. Take a moment to model the problem in all its detail. Honestly, if you've seen one coyote problem, you've seen them all. You've got the cliff. It's a known height. Let's call it H. If we're lucky, it'll be given the problem. And you've got the coyote running straight off, absolutely positively straight in the horizontal direction, off the cliff. Things we may be interested in is how long it will take the coyote until the coyote hits the ground. No, no, not because gravity takes a long time to work, but the coyote takes a long time to fall. Take a second and draw in the coyote's path. Pause. Press play when you're ready to check your work. You didn't draw a straight line path, did you? Good. Because gravity is not straight. Gravity is parabolic. The coyote is going to pick up speed as he falls, and when he lands with a sickening thud, it will be over here. Do not draw a right triangle. It isn't a right triangle. The range, how far from the edge of the cliff the coyote lands, is going to be something in the land of delta x, the change in x. Where will the coyote land? Let's solve for it. Take out your list of eight equations for projectile motion. Ask yourself, is what you want going to be in the horizontal column or the vertical column? Pick the equation that has what you want in it, write it down, solve it if you can, solve it as far as you can, press play to check your work. You can say x final and start at a certain x initial, or you can just start at the location that you want to and say change in displacement, then whatever you start it. It's not wrong to do it the other way, but I find this way a little bit shorter. Now, the full equation, Wait. as you just said, looks like this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have checked the problem. The coyote is in the air. No wings, no rocket boosters, no air resistance because uh, coyote cartoons have never heard of air resistance in this context. What's the acceleration in the x direction of something that's in free fall? What's the horizontal acceleration of free fall? Ooh. Going which way, Yabby? Uh, west, sorry. No, 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 you, no, say what you said again. Wait, you, you said, said horizontal. it's going down. So what yeah. was that horizontal? It was zero because the acceleration is down. Therefore, this formula simplifies into this. And now everybody's formula looks the same. Now, you can expand VIX with vi cosine theta if there is a theta. Is there a theta in this problem? No. Ah, then is it worthwhile writing vi cosine theta? No, no there's nothing no. wrong with writing it. It's just not going to get you any further. All right, what don't we have? We don't have the time, fully. All right, well, then we better not use this equation, then. Is there any other equation we have in the horizontal direction for delta x that isn't just a variant of this equation? Sound of papers rustling, sound of crickets chirping. Is there any other equation? Uh, no, there isn't. Uh, Rats, no, we're stuck with this. Okay, therefore, what do we have to do? We have no choice. Hmm. So you're saying we're going to have to work in the vertical, even though the question asks for horizontal? Hmm. Do we have any other choice? Sorry. Sorry. Do, seriously, do we have any other choice? We are out of equations in the horizontal. What will we need to solve for if we're going to use this equation? We need T. Now, T for what? T for the coyote to do what? Hit the fall. ground. Fall. Okay, fall. Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Falling is horizontal? I mean, vertical. Aha. It's vertical. Okay. In the video notes, it said that every single letter is different in the horizontal set and in the vertical set. Every single one 
accept time. You weren't wrong when you said we wanted the horizontal time. You were absolutely accurate and specific. Somebody else said we wanted the falling time. They're the same time. Time is neither horizontal nor vertical. It's not a vector. It's a scalar. It just is. Therefore, if we're out of equations in this column, we can solve for t, and we can solve for t using vertical equations. So hit up that nice list of equations again. Find something vertical, full of letters that you know. Don't use information if you don't need to use information. Focus on the simplest way of writing things. Again, take 30 seconds to go equation hunting. Write something down. And we're going to check your work in a sec. From before, this equation looks very promising. It's got the T that we're looking for. And other than that, it has things we know. G here, the letter G is defined as positive. 9.81. The negative we put into the equation so it would be there automatically. We didn't do this for generic displacement velocity acceleration problems because half of them were cars and trucks and trains that were going horizontally. We said, look, find the acceleration on your own time. When you have it, shove it in here. But if this is specifically a projectile, if it's made to be falling, we know the acceleration is going to be negative, so we put the negative in the formula. My point is don't have two negatives. This side of the formula should be going down. Now, a lot of people on their papers, in their notes, have vi sine theta t minus 1 half gt squared. Someone objected to that, and if I may paraphrase the objection, it has a sine theta in it. You know what? That's a valid objection. If it makes you break out in hives just by looking at it, it is definitely worthwhile to find an easier way. We have several people um, whose IEPs show that they are deathly allergic to trigonometry of all kinds. Let's make this as allergen-free a zone as possible. The way I wrote it is VIY. I want to translate VI sine theta into English. What the Dickens is VI sine theta? What's a VIY? Tell me in English what it means. Exactly. Now, two people spoke at the same time. One of them said vertical. One of them said initial velocity. Let's put them all together. This is the initial vertical velocity. And it doesn't matter how you write it as long as you know what it means. You could write vi sine theta just like you wrote it on the other side. One's a really good time to write vi sine theta, when there's a big old theta in your problem. If there isn't a big old theta in your problem labeled in the picture, you may want to choose to write this information differently just to make it look less confusing. Ladies and gentlemen of coyote land, what is the initial vertical velocity of this coyote? Zero. Why? Falling. Aha, what direction is the initial velocity? Down. Check the picture. What is the direction? Uh, why horizontal? Yes, the coyote starts horizontally. Initially is as the problem begins. And you saw in the movie clip, very dramatically, as the problem begins, the coyote is not falling. Here is the initial velocity. The coyote runs straight horizontally off the cliff. Now review, what effect does horizontal motion have on vertical motion? None whatsoever. Bam. Now, how far is the delta y? Coyote falls halfway, then what? How far does the coyote fall down from here to here? Fantastic. How much t height in total does the coyote fall? Of what? What's our height here? Break out the algebra. Take a look at the picture. This, If you're lucky, this is going to be given. How far does the coyote fall? 
then acceleration is negative because the coyote is falling down. But the coyote is going down. The coyote goes from H to zero. That is a fall of negative H. Specifically, if you're using the long form, the initial position of the coyote is H. The final position of the coyote is zero. And if you have Y final equals Y initial plus the rest of the equation, one way or another, you're going to have negative H on this side. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a one-to-one -one error correspondence. If you find yourself trying to take the square root of a negative number in a motion problem, there is 100% certainty that you forgot one negative sign when you first substituted your numbers in. 100%, I guarantee that's what the mistake was. There should have been two negatives of which you only remember to write one. So go back to the point where you substituted everything. Look for something that went down. In most first-year physics classes, the one people forget most often is the displacement on the left-hand side. That's why we spent so much time going over it in class. If you're falling down, your change in displacement is negative. Now, to summarize the results of the group algebra, these negatives cancel out. Move two to the other side. Notes, notes, notes. If you move the two to the other side by multiplying, you don't have that nasty little divide by one half before, and you have a falling time of the square root of 2h over g. This is not a formula. It does not go on your list with the eight formulas. It is unique to the Wiley Coyote problem because only in the Wiley Coyote problem do you have zero initial vertical velocity. But for anything that, get okay, you're on YouTube, for anything that goes straight off a cliff or straight off anything else, you can find the falling time and plug straight in to solve for the horizontal range. Solve for the final answer. Press play to check your work. Ready? In this type of Wiley Coyote problem, you can see that the initial horizontal velocity is the initial velocity. You can see the coyote runs straight off the cliff. So instead of writing vi cosine theta, you can just write vi. If you want to do this the fancy way with trig cosine theta for theta of zero is just one. There we have it. Vi cosine theta is just Vi. So if you're looking for where the coyote is going to land, you're one step from the end. You've got everything you need. You're given the initial horizontal velocity. The proportion of the initial velocity is horizontal? All of it. You found the time by dint of algebra. The only time you can use this setup is when the initial velocity is completely horizontal. In that case, you've got two negatives. You could do this the long and nasty way. You could say h divided by one half equals gt squared. You could say h divided by one half g, but Dividing is the fractions is easy as pi. Flip the second and multiply. This simply saves you the step of flipping the second and multiplying. We don't need that one really. Don't forget the squared because when you remember it, it'll get you that square root. Please note that in the other case. In the case where we're launched at an angle, and this really is vi sine theta, because we actually have a theta that's given, 
then in that case this term does not cancel out. You cannot simply solve for t cleanly and t may be many strange things and you may need a quadratic formula t equals negative b that's v i sine theta plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac that's v i sine squared sine squared theta all over 2g all over oh my goodness i don't want to do a quadratic formula on this I will find a different equation. You've got a launch angle theta, use a different equation. But if you're going straight horizontally, it's going to be the exact same setup every time.